So let's now look at large scale manufacture of sulfuric acid which is also being referred to as the contact process. So this process of large scale manufacture is referred to as contact process. So the raw materials for the manufacture of sulfuric acid in contact process we have sulfur oxide and oxygen gas. So as you can see this is the flowchart diagram of the contact process as we know it whereby we begin with sulfur reacting with oxygen in the burner and then we have the purifier or the dryer then the heat exchanger up to the last one so this diagram summarizes the contact process up to where we obtain the oleum and then the dilution chamber to obtain concentrated sulfuric acid so let's begin with the first one which is the chamber which is the burner so in the burner chamber we'll see that sulfur and oxygen are burnt in order to produce sulfur for oxide gas so sulfur is burnt in excess oxygen in order to produce uh, sulfur for oxide gas as per the reaction as you can see so basically that's all about the burner sulfur is is burnt and reacted with excess oxygen to produce sulfur for oxide gas so apart from that the next one now we have the purifier from the burner we go now to the purifier so in the purifier we'll see that purification is mainly done by electrostatic precipitation this basically removes dust particles since impurities if there are impurities in the atmosphere these impurities are going to poison the catalyst that is going to be used which is vanadium pentoxide or platinized asbestos so in the purifier dust and other purities will be removed in the electro uh, by using the method of electrostatic precipitation so this poisoning basically will reduce the efficiency of the catalyst and will also reduce the yield which will be produced so after that we'll see that the gas is then passed also through kong sulfuric acid in order to remove water vapor from the atmosphere so in the purification chamber remember we are removing dust we are removing other impurities and also we have kong sulfuric acid to remove water vapor from the atmosphere so apart from that the third chamber we have the heat exchanger as you can see we have the gas passing through the heat, uh, through the heat exchanger and then it will still come back in the heat exchanger in order for the gases or heat absorption process to take place so in the heat exchanger we'll see that the gas is heated to attain a desired temperature before being passed to the catalytic chamber whereby the catalytic chamber is now where sulfur oxide is going to react with uh, with excess oxygen again to form sulfur 6 oxide so from the heat exchanger we now go to the catalytic chamber which is the next one so in this chamber we'll see that platinized catalyst is used to react sulfur four oxide with oxygen whereby in the presence of this suitable catalyst sulfur four oxide is going to react with oxygen in an equilibrium reaction to form sulfur 6 oxide and heat so heat here is going to be generated so also in this chamber we'll see that in this chamber however vanadium pentoxide is preferred since it is cheaper and it is less poisoned so for the platinized asbestos it is expensive it has high yield but it is easily poisoned so in this chamber vanadium pentoxide is mostly preferred first of all because it is cheap and it is less poisoned so it is not poisoned as much as the platinized asbestos catalyst uh, will be poisoned so to obtain a very high yield here in this catalytic chamber we'll see that very low temperatures and high pressure are used in order to obtain a very high yield so you're going to use very low temperatures and very high pressure however by using low temperatures the reaction will be very slow because we see that high temperatures will encourage high release of the yield so high temperatures will encourage sulfur oxide to react faster with oxygen to form sulfur 6 oxide so basically the temperatures of 450 degrees celsius and three atmospheres are used in this catalytic chamber so these temperatures and pressure which is 450 degrees celsius at three atmosphere is called the optimum conditions for obtaining the yield so this temperature for 50 degrees celsius and three atmosphere these are called the optimum conditions for obtaining the sulfur four oxide yield so after that uh, we now go to the absorption chamber so as you can see we have the absorption chamber and in the absorpt absorption chamber sulfur 6 oxide is being reacted with conch sulfuric acid to form what is referred to as the oleum so the sulfur 6 oxide is not allowed to dissolve directly with water because we could dissolve sulfur 6 oxide with water to get conch sulfuric acid but 
this is not done as so. So the sulfur 6 oxide is not dissolved with water directly to form the Kong sulfuric acid that we need, since this produces excess heat, whereby this excess heat could be able to boil the Kong sulfuric acid. If the Kong sulfuric acid will be boiled, it will form sulfuric acid vapor. This sulfuric acid vapor is highly poisonous to human beings, is highly poisonous to living things. So we basically try to bypass that process by which we'll react sulfur 6 oxide with water because this reaction is highly exothermic. Being highly exothermic, yes, it will form the sulfuric acid, but this high heat which is being produced is going to boil the sulfuric acid to form sulfuric acid vapor which we do not need. So instead, we react sulfur 6 oxide with conch sulfuric acid. So we we'll react sulfur 6 oxide with another conch sulfuric acid to get this product which is referred to as the oleum. And as you can see, if we react SO2 plus uh, sulfuric acid concentrated, we get this what is now called the oleum. So after forming the oleum, now the oleum will be dissolved in water. So if we now dissolve the oleum in water, there will be minimal heat produced. Now this minimal heat produced will encourage even a higher yield of sulfuric acid, uh, of concentrated sulfuric acid liquid to be formed. So the unreacted sulfur oxide in contact process is removed from the chimneys by basically using the chimney or basically treating, basically treating the chimney with calcium hydroxide whereby this process we called it scrubbing. So remember, this process whereby we remove the excess sulfur oxide from the chimneys of motor vehicles or the chimneys in the contact process, this process we called it scrubbing. So basically scrubbing is done to prevent toxic sulfur oxide from polluting the atmosphere. Basically we are reacting this excess sulfur oxide with calcium hydroxide to get calcium sulfate and water. Calcium sulfate can be used as plant fertilizer. So calcium sulfate is beneficial to the environment, but sulfur oxide is not because it's going to form acid rain. And we looked at the effects of acid rain, corrosion of motor vehicles, corrosion of iron sheets, leaching of minerals, pollution of water. So you don't need acid rain. So instead, we undertake scrubbing whereby we react the excess sulfur oxide gas with calcium hydroxide to form calcium sulfate and water molecules. So finally, we see that in Kenya, sulfuric acid is manufactured in Thika by the Kel Chemical Limited Industries, and also we have the Orbit, yeah, the Orbit Chemical Industries. So those are the areas by which sulfuric acid are manufactured here in Kenya. So fast forward, let's now look at the physical properties of sulfuric acid. So what are the physical properties of sulfuric acid? So first of all, we see that sulfuric acid is one of the strongest acid. Basically, sulfuric acid is the strongest acid that we have. So, uh, like whereby we see that sulfuric acid is oily and a colorless liquid. So the first property is that it is oily. The next one, it is a colorless liquid. And it has a density of 1.83 grams per centimeter cubed. Also, we see that sulfuric acid is non-volatile liquid. So it doesn't evaporate easily. It is non-volatile liquid. It has a boiling point of 338, 338 degrees Celsius with a melting point of 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, apart from that, we'll see that it has a very pungent smell and it is highly corrosive. So sulfuric acid is highly and highly corrosive. So after the physical properties, let's now look at the chemical properties of sulfuric acid. So for the chemical properties, the first one we see that uh, or rather, let's first of all look at the chemical properties of concentrated sulfuric acid, then we look at the chemical properties of dilute sulfuric acid. Because these chemical properties of sulfuric acid for the conch and the dilute are not the same. The conch has its own properties, the dilute has its own properties. So let's begin with the chemical properties of concentrated sulfuric acid. So the first one we see that conch sulfuric acid has very high affinity for water, and that's why it is used as a dehydrating agent to remove water vapor from atmosphere or remove water vapor from air. So first of all, we see that when adding, uh, or rather, let's look at reaction between conch sulfuric acid and sugar. So what happens if we react conch sulfuric acid with sugar? So you'll see that 
when consulfuric acid is added to sugar, the sugar crystal will turn from being the white color to a black mass of carbon. Yeah. So if you react consulfuric acid with sugar, so the white sugar or the brown sugar is going to change color from white to a black mass. This is because consulfuric acid will dehydrate, will remove all the water that, that the sugar contains to form a black mass of carbon and water molecules. As you can look at this equation, if we react sugar, the normal sugar, which is sucrose, with corn sulfuric acid, so we're going to get carbon solid, which is black, plus molecules of water. So that's what happens when we react corn sulfuric acid with sugar. We are going to get a black mass. So also we see that it forms carbon 2 oxide when it is reacted with methanoic acid. So if we react it with methanoic acid, it's going to remove the water vapor. So take note. The reaction of sugar, it removed water vapor from the sugar. We only got carbon. If we react it with, if we react it with methanoic acid, it removed water vapor to get carbon to oxide. So also, uh, for let us see, we see that it forms alkenes when we react it with, uh, with alcohol. So if we react alcohol with corn sulfuric acid, it is going to dehydrate. It's going to remove the water from the alcohol. And therefore, we are going to obtain an alkene plus water. Like, for example, if you can look at this experiment, if we react an alcohol with corn sulfuric acid, we'll get an alkene plus water. For example, if we react ethanol with corn sulfuric acid, we'll get an alkene, which is ethene plus molecules of water. So that's what you are going to get. And also for the chemical equation. So that's what we are going to get. If we react it with corn uh, we, we react alcohols with corn sulfuric acid, we are going to get an alkene plus water vapor. Apart from that letter D, we see that it removes water from hydrated salts. So if we react corn sulfuric acid with an hydrated salt, a moist salt, so it will remove the water vapor from the hydrated salt. Like for example, this equation you see, if we react corn sulfuric acid with copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate, which is blue in color, so we're going to get a a white copper 2 sulfate, sulfate rather, plus 5 molecules of water. So basically, corn sulfuric acid will remove traces of water vapor. It is water loving. It is corn, so it needs water. If it gets in contact with anything having water, it will remove that water from that substance. If that substance will remain dry, then the sulfuric acid will be hydrated. So you see that the concentrated sulfuric acid behaves like a hygroscopic salt since it has very high affinity for water molecules. Therefore, it easily absorbs water in the surrounding or any place that ha has available water. And due to this feature, it is used as a drying agent for many laboratory preparation of gases. Whereby, if we need to obtain um, pure hydrogen, or if we need to obtain pure oxygen, we are going to pass this gas through corn sulfuric acid to remove the water vapor for us to obtain a dry oxygen gas, etc. So apart from that, uh, we'll say that corn sulfuric acid also uh, is used to, to dry gases such as um, oxygen. It can also be used to dry hydrogen. It can also be used to dry nitrogen and sulfur for oxide. So it should never be used to dry gases such as ammonia because it will react with ammonia to form ammonium sulfate. So you should, in preparation of ammonia gas in harbor process, we do not use corn sulfuric acid to dry the gas, but we use calcium chloride, anhydrous calcium chloride to dry ammonia gas. Why don't you use corn sulfuric acid to dry ammonia gas? We don't use corn sulfuric acid to dry ammonia gas because if we use corn sulfuric acid, it will react with the ammonia to form ammonium sulfate. And we don't need ammonium sulfate, we only need ammonia. So we cannot use it to dry ammonia gas. Instead, ammonia gas, we use calcium anhydrous calcium chloride. So we also see that this corn sulfuric acid can also be used as an oxidizing agent according to the reactions that you can see. So like according to this reaction, we see that corn sulfuric acid can also be used as a drying agent, as an oxidizing agent rather, whereby it will react with copper to form copper 2 sulfate plus sulfur oxide plus some traces of water molecule. Also, if it reacts with zinc, we are going to get zinc sulfate plus sulfur oxide plus water molecule. So 
remember that apart from being used as a dehydrating agent it can also be used as an oxidizing agent so it can oxidize copper and zinc to copper sulfate and zinc sulfate respectively so apart from that we'll see that it also oxidizes solid and metal such as sulfur carbon to their gaseous state whereby if it reacts with this non metals that is sulfur it is going to oxidize sulfur from being sulfur to sulfur oxide it is going to oxidize carbon from being carbon to carbon four oxide so if it reacts with carbon we have an exception it's going to react with carbon but in this case we are going to get also sulfur four oxide so if kong sulf sulfuric acid reacts with carbon we are going to get carbon four oxide sulfur four oxide and water molecule yes as per this equation so we're going to get sulfur four oxide carbon four oxide and water molecules as you can see in this equation so apart from that we see that it also displaces more volatile acids from their salt like for example if it reacts with potassium nitrate we are going to get nitric acid and potassium hydrogen sulfate if it reacts with sodium chloride we are going to get hydrochloric acid and and an acid salt which is sodium hydrogen sulfate so also if it reacts with sodium nitrate you are going to get nitric acid plus sodium hydrogen sulfate Thank you.